financial accounting. We've been talking about long-term liabilities, specifically bonds payable. Well, what happens when a bond gets called in? In other words, retired. Well, there is a journal entry for retirement. So let's take a look at it. Um, and it always is debit bond payable because, you know, we're retiring the bond. And we're going to have to credit cash. Why? Well, you got to pay the bond when you retire it. Let's take a look at short exercise 7. And in short exercise 7, it says the following. It says the Geller Corporation has outstanding $400,000, 8% bonds that are callable at 104. Now, what does 104 mean? 104%, right. Okay, on December 1st, immediately after the payment of the semi-annual interest and the amortization of the bond discount uh, were recorded, the unamortized bond discount equaled 10500 So on all those bonds is 10500 of discount. On that date, not all of it, but only $240,000 of bonds were called and retired. So I'm bringing home $240,000 in bonds. So I'm going to debit bonds payable for $240,000. The credit to cash, well, I'm paying, I have to call them in at a little sweetener, which was what? 104% of the $240,000. So the amount of cash I have to pay out is $249,600. So to bring those $240,000 of bonds in, I've got to pay out that much money. In addition to that, I also have to get the proportionate amount of discount or unamortized discount off my books. Well, let's see how I would do that. I'm going to credit unamortized discount on bonds payable. Um, I'm retiring $240,000 of the 400,000 of bonds, and those 400,000 of bonds currently have a balance and discount of 10,500. So if I retire the proportionate amount, in other words, 240 over 400, times the discount balance, which is 6,300, aren't I retiring the amount of discount that pertains to these 240,000 in bonds? Yes. Now, does this entry balance? No. Well, that means I either had a gain or a loss on retirement. Um, and I think I need a debit, don't you? And when I need a debit, is that called a gain or is that called a loss? It's a loss, isn't it? So I'm going to have a loss on retirement for the fabulous plug of whatever the difference is between the debit and the credits. And the loss that I am suffering is $15,900. Now you're saying, why, did, why would you take a loss? Remember the interest rates. This bond had an interest rate of 8%. I would probably want to retire some of that if, what, the interest rate fell, wouldn't you? Because then can I turn around and issue more bonds at a much lower interest rate? So that may be the motivation behind this problem, that we wanted to retire some bonds so we could issue some more bonds at a lower rate.